Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Sunday Night Breakdown, Monday edition. Daniel Ratledge and Dave Forrester with you uh, to go back over all of the action in the British Basketball League this week. I've got a slightly unusual full disclosure. It's if you can hear the thudding of ball on concrete, my son and his girlfriend are playing basketball outside. So just in yeah, case... He's got the, a good one there, hasn't he? The, the, the listeners are listening. <laughs> he's got a good thud, one thud, there. Thud, thud, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think what we'll do, Dave, is if we if we do this in the style of the old basketball call, do you remember the basketball call from the 80s and 90s, 08, 9, 8? We'll, oh, get yes. all, we'll put all the games that nobody's interested in first, and then we'll get to the finals at the end. George, I have to... 48p a minute or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Don't I have to talk? <laughs> exactly, that's exactly it. There's no right. Simpsons. Let's, let's, let's get into the action. Um, starting on Thursday night with a Manchester Giants 94, uh, London Lions 56. No Clark for the Giants, no neighbor, Reese Lockhart, Lockhart for the Lions. Washburn, we read on Twitter, is gone, but there's been no confirmation from the club to that effect, but he's obviously not there. Uh, make of that what you will. Um, it's kind of hard to look back at this game without thinking uh, uh, through the prism of the final to be honest Absolutely. with you but um but they were a bit of a mess london weren't they i don't want to take any away from manchester but london were just not very good were they i think you know london lions 56 is a half time score isn't it yeah 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 um or it was for most of the season um yeah you're right and, and it does kind of get a little bit um taken over by by what happened on sunday but i tried to you know cast my mind back to it I mean, the first thing is is Washburn. I mean, you can't discuss the game by just saying, "Oh, by one by the way, one of the best players just isn't there, and nobody yeah. knows why." Yeah. You know, and the word came out, I think, on Saturday, on Sunday, from one of the it might have been from Mark Woods, that, that he's still under contract, mm. but he's not there. And there's a yeah. tweet that he's left, and he's and not obviously there. Obviously, Sportando had said that he's he, gone. He's gone. And you know, it's not great because. You know, we, we get injury reports from London, but, you know, if one of your main guys leaves in the week before a final, um, then you need to level with your fans and tell them what's going on. Um, particularly when it's not being kept a secret. You know, if, mm. if, if you know, if, there's always this, this second they will have a competitive advantage. If we don't tell them, then they'll prepare for him and they'll mm. be the advantage to us, which I never really got that hung off, to be honest. No. I don't really think it made much difference at all, if any. But even if you discount, but you discount that argument because the news came out. You know, so it's not so much getting ahead of the story. They're, they're four days or five days behind the story, and there still is no story. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's just not really not really good enough. Um, and again, it's what we talk about with you know registered players and deregistered players and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it just it doesn't. It, it, it's not good for Sky. It means there's an elephant in the room basically when you can yeah, discuss yeah. the game. So that's a big thing. And on top of that, he's the he's the most important player. Take away Reese. You know, not even close. He's been the fulcrum of everything they've done. He's been the most selfless guy all season. He's actually been the one you want to take more shots. He's been the one who defends the best player. He's been messed around. He's been taking it the starting line, out the starting line. If he didn't, didn't get to play on New Year's Day when he was um, stripped, at, sorry. And suddenly he just, he just goes. And I, I think what people need to understand, I'm sure they do, but, you know, it isn't just the fact that you lose a player. It's the instability that causes within the rest of the group. Yeah. Yeah. Because Julian Washburn will have been, he may have been in a flat. He may have his his social life for the past six weeks, six months may have been Kyla Kelly. And I don't know this, but yeah. it's most likely to be Kyla Kelly, um, Isaiah Reese, and a couple of the other guys, because they're the, the guys, Kajini, because they're the Dirk Williams, because they're the guys who come in from abroad, they're new to us, they have facing the same experiences as each other. Yeah. Now the minute that Washburn kind of says, Oh no, I've I've had enough, that has to kind of impact reverberate amongst the other players and you know the team that we saw on Thursday night and subsequently on Sunday but primarily on Thursday night um, was not a team in March in yeah. March you're meant to be ready you've, you've yeah, been yeah, together yeah. All season. Yeah, yeah. you're putting yourself yeah. together 
you've been there the whole season and you've got, you know each other's foibles and you, you, you've been through all the hardships of the season, all the difficulties and you're seeing the other end and now is the time where we're going to go for it and make it all worthwhile. Well, you look but at the Lions the, last year, this, is, this was their peak bit. Now, I know they've played a ton more games this year because of Europe and whatever, but this was, what did they win? 13 of the last 14 or something ridiculous absolutely. like that, didn't they? Yeah, and the trophy final in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and um, and finals and games and stuff is, is not necessarily won by the, the team with the best. It's the team who sticks together, the club who sticks together. Um, and there was no, there's no togetherness within that London group. And part of that is because <laughs> they've not been together, mm. you know. Um, um, Bradley Caboza has just come in, he's played three games. Mm. Brian Martin's played six games. Um, Kyle Kelly's back and forwards and within the group. Washburn is not there. Been, and, been out for Jordan Williams has been out for four months. Yeah. Um, and suddenly you think, well, why aren't they playing the way they're meant to play? Well, they're, they're a bunch of individuals who've not been with each other, whereas everybody else has spent the last three, two or three months in theory getting better and bonding in, in, the, in, in the excuse mentality. So that's all the, the, the backdrop to it all. But that said, um, and... and it's difficult because you don't want to take anything away from Manchester. Mm. Um, London, and, and particularly from Tyreek Armstrong, who I thought was has, has made a leap because mm. he, he ran that game like he knew everything that was going to happen in it, that he was in yeah. charge of the whole game, that he had that degree of assuredness, which isn't confident. It doesn't mean you're yapping in people's faces, but it means he's just utterly assured that he knows what's going on. He's figured it out. You know, it takes a while. Some 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 point guards, some first years never get it. Some takes till the second year. Some, you know, obviously don't come back at all. Mm. Um, but he he his physical game was always there. Mentally, he's just taking a massive jump, and you can see it in the way that he plays because he, he is there. He is the, the the fulcrum of their team, um, and he was great in this game as well. But they got out, they got beaten every which way. Um, Jordan Williams, I can't, I can't believe Jordan Williams is healthy. No. You know, he he did not back down anybody. You know, Jordan Williams is the best post player in the league for the last two years. Pure mm. post player. If you give him the ball, single coverage, he will score. He gets to the middle, shoots the jump hook. He just scores. He just, he just does it fearlessly. He knows how yeah, he yeah. knows his game. Um, double coverage is a great passer. Double coverage is he's, he's a very very good passer. Yeah, I agree. And um, so you know that's his game. You know, you, if you're going to guard us with one guy, right, I'm going to score on you. If not, I'm going to facilitate for others. Every time he caught the ball in the post, he never looked to make a move. You know, and he was being guarded, but he wasn't being guarded by the biggest guys in the world. He was kind of very tentative. He was looking to pass the ball out, anything other than look at the rim. So. You know, what minutes, is, you know, realistically, should he be playing in that team? Well, he wouldn't be playing if Washburn was still there, would he? Mm. Um, then you look at, as we've, we've been through the Ryan Martin thing, you know, and it's it's at this point whereby I'm, you know, I don't know where to put the, I'm probably getting into the next game as well a little bit, but we'll leave it shortly. Um, I don't know where to kind of point the finger mm. because I can't believe, I mean, firstly, you've got, they have a very, very unusual structure in British basketball terms because they've got a general manager who picked the team. Mm. That doesn't happen anywhere else. No. You know, we have a, a few clubs have general managers, mm. but the coaches pick the team. Mm. The coaches sign the players in the summer. So that's not happened in this. Then you've got the GM who's got rid of a coach. He's put another coach in. So that other coach has made what I thought was a, <laughs> still a, a, a pretty bizarre decision to introduce Martin straight into the starting lineup, which has been, I think, borne out by the figures. And I'm just wondering whether it's that coach's decision mm. or whether it's a GM yeah, who's yeah, telling yeah, him yeah, yeah, to, this yeah. is who he has to play. Because yeah. I'm looking at... Looking it's not at unusual it in, in American sport, is it? I mean, well, particularly not. baseball these days. You know, GMs... Well, it's not, it's, it's not unusual even in the NBA. I mean, you know, NBA, NBA, yeah. Yeah, you know, they're up there saying Goran Dragic and Goran Dragic didn't play. <laughs> You know, Goran Dragic was good enough to play, but he wasn't the, the, the guy that they wanted to take their team forwards, you know, and eventually got traded away. Um, so, I'm, you know, because I could, can't contemplate that, you know, all of this, this stuff is going on. Um, and I don't know, and I don't know Vince, obviously, I know Vince a little bit, but um, I don't really know James Veer, but he's, he's, you know, he's got a great resume. He's done a lot of good stuff. He knows the game. Mm. And you know, ultimately, once you start introducing things and players, and, and which aren't backed up, and, and you have to, and you stick at it and you stick with it, 
all the other, all it does is it turns all the other players' heads and they're like, why is he playing instead of me? Mm. He's not producing. And, and, and a team can become a bunch of individuals very, very quickly. Yeah. So, yeah, so in this game, I thought the lack of um, togetherness was, was palpable. And I thought to lose by 38 was an embarrassment. Mm. Um, and I thought I'd said all the nasty things I could think of this month about Newcastle last week. Mm. And, um, you know, I thought London were, you know, potentially worse. Now, they do miss Reese, and Reese is 50 to 20 points a game for them, yeah, yeah, not just yeah. in scoring, but in relation to plus minus because of the way he plays. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Kelly's, Kelly is a much better player with Reese. Kelly's a much better player with Reese, but Kelly's, well, we'll get on to Kelly in relation to the yeah, second yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's 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 wrap this one up. Really, yeah. uh, it, it was fifteen seventeen with three to play in the first quarter. Saunders hit eight in a nine zero run to twenty four seventeen, and then there was a six minute spell in the second quarter where London had one Kelly dunk while Manchester scored nineteen points at the other end. It was forty five twenty one, and it just. Uh, I mean, I feel bad here because Manchester did exactly what they had to do, and we've not talked about them, but. Um, they're not really the story of this game, but it was a good oh, week. That, that, Armstrong was really good. I thought yeah. Olsen and Lewis were really good. Lewis was yeah. really good because he, he he posted up early. He didn't just shoot threes early. He, he used his body, got to the rim a little bit and was effective. But they're just, you know, Manchester have had their dip. They got Mac Knight back. They're playing with a bit of confidence again. They've yeah. beaten Leicester. They're feeling good about themselves. Yeah. And London, of course, the, the, the extra thing being that's three days before a trophy final. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you've got to be rearing up to that. You've got to be, you know, building the group up. You've got to be, you can't just be taking that game off. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Lewis with 20, Armstrong 8 for 11 for 18.7 rebounds, 5 assists. Uh, Saunders had 14 there, 35 points off 25 London turnovers. Uh, Dirk Williams had 10, um, uh, sorry, 11 and led them in scoring. Ryan Martin had um a double double, ten and ten off one of eight shooting. Uh Caboza had nine. Uh Friday night, um, Surrey Scorchers sixty, Leicester Riders eighty-two. Surrey at full strength. I feel like that needs saying every week when they are. Uh Mo Walker back for the riders, but looked like they're working him back in. Um this this was pretty even until the second quarter, and you got Crandall and Loving hitting threes. Nelson Henry with some great catches and finishes. Uh inside and Leicester went from one point up 22 23 to 15 points up at halftime 30 45 and and really that was yeah well well sorry for my benefit for my mindset two full strength you know they played 11 players in the first mm. half mm. now it's tough to play nine mm. right and to get production out of them and they played one was played two minutes um after the first quarter break Wilkins played three minutes at the end. Um, and because of the, the length of the amount of their bench, you know, I think Stanley Davis only played eight minutes in the first half. Mm. Um, and there are some guys you can kind of work into a rotation. Some teams you can work guys into a rotation against. You can't do that against Leicester because, you know, if, if, not, if the players you've got on court aren't ready to be at that level, then they will pick that apart. And I thought that's it did. I thought Surrey, that's what they did. I thought Surrey's kind of lack of continuity of player in the first half let Leicester get out into that second quarter. And primarily because Surrey didn't, re didn't really have any capability of stopping the screen and roll. Mm. And the screen and roll, you know, I've talked about before, the screen and roll is um, the point guard, which is generally Crandall, and either... Nelson Henry or Walker, generally Nelson Henry. And you've got to take that away. You just can't, because you can't let Crandall get his assist and Nelson Henry get his 21 points on 12, on, on 10 shots. Eight shots. Nelson Henry's 10 to 8 shots. But Nelson Henry's too good a finisher. Uh, Crandall's too good a passer. So you have to throw extra bodies into the kind of the loop in relation to that and then right, rotate out to the shooters. And I don't think they did that. And I thought Ringer actually really... You know, really played well. I like you know, Ringer's really stepped up and you know, four or five games in kind of shows that you don't need to have a long preseason, you don't need to be with a team to you know to be quite effective quite quickly. Um, and I thought he did a, a pretty man manful job in trying to sort that out, but he needed more help, he needed more digging down from the wings to, to kind of um 
take that away because if you leave those guys one on one, then they get layups. If they, if they get layups, you can't run. They can set up the defense, and it's, it's all over. Yeah. Um, it was. I think Leicester have played a little bit better, but I do like the way that they like the way that they played. They, they literally, it, it is, it's not formulaic, but it's very methodical. They go through this. They, the first play of the game is always going to be down low to Nelson Henry. And, you know, it hadn't been clearly, sorry, I hadn't scouted it because they rotated the basketball and he got caught on it. And Ringer got caught on a little um, slip and Nelson Henry catches the ball two feet away and it's a layup. Second play of the game, they run the same play again. This time Ringer knows what's coming and he's able to make Nelson Henry catch it 15 feet from the basket. It's a different thing. So it's that extra little bit of attention to detail, which you can do when you've got teams that have been together all season, but it's very, very difficult to do when, you, when you're still trying to teach your guys your players. Mm, yeah. You know, when you've still got your full team coming in for the first time. And, um, you know, I, I think, you know, Leicester are kind of benefiting from everybody getting healthy. They will benefit even more from everybody getting healthy. But the thing for them will be to keep their edge as, as the season goes on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know, because they're probably going to win the league in three weeks' time, you know? They're five, um, five, five wins away, but obviously with each London loss, that gets a bit closer as well if London yeah. do lose. Twenty one days give or take for me. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Um and so they're gonna have to keep their edge. Um but they're they're very, very efficient in in what they do. I think Crandall's not quite right. Um certainly first half was a couple of winces. Um he's been on the bike. If he's got some tendonitis or something like that, or something it looks like kind of a leg thing. So they're gonna have to monitor that and keep him right. Um, sorry, I think they need to. <laughs> I've had so few players all season, they're going to need to sort a rotation out very quickly. Mm. Um, and you know, it's not fair on guys to play them two and a half minutes in a game and not play them again. I mean, you know, I know they work hard in practice, but you know, it's, it's not, it's not, um, it's a meritocracy, it's not a, a charity either. You need to play for the team, or, or we've got enough guys without you, you know. Mm. Um, and I think. They are settling into more of a rhythm and it benefits them that ringers there because ringers a focal point for them that they probably didn't have offensively and defensively. Um but whether they as I say, I mean Hamrick Hamrick was yesterday. I remember this game, but remember back that Hamrick, 16 minutes first half, no points, no assists, no rebounds, mm. maybe a turnover, maybe a steal. Clearly at half time, they lit into him because first three offenses the second half, lay up, lay up. Jump shot, yeah, bang, yeah, bang, yeah, bang. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, it was like, okay, that, he's been told that he's, you know, he's he's here to he's here to make plays. Um, but that can happen, you see, when you've got a lot of guys coming in and out, and you're, you're trying to refine your situation again yeah. in, within yeah. the group. I think they're struggling to do that. Yeah. I um the one thing I forgot to I said they were at full strength. They obviously didn't have legend, and uh, that became obvious yeah. when Mo Walker's just moving people out of the way. Legend might have. Yeah provided some some resistance to there a couple of times in the second half they got it to to nine points the last of which was in the fourth quarter i think it was about six minutes ago and gino threw an incredible pass from underneath where it was like almost like after an afterthought to to kick it out to to wheel for three wheel and then hit five points in a row and riders finished 15-2 to to win win going away in the end uh, Ringer finished with 14 points and seven rebounds. Jules Dangakodo had 11. They were the only two in double figures. Nelson Henry, eight of eight for 21 points. Whelan, 15, loving 13. And what was um, Walker? What was Walker as well? Walker, I, I, like yeah, I think, he, I think he had eight. I haven't written it down, but he played like about 15 minutes. Very, I, I think it was four or five for shot. eight points. Yeah, so that's 12 or 13, Walker and Nelson yeah. Henry. You just can't yeah, win. Yeah. That. No. You can't win. You've got no shot. You have no. to defend that first. I think you did. You, you put the player efficiency numbers up on. Yeah, Twitter, so then one, two, and three in the uh, BBL in efficiency per um, 40 minutes, which sort of takes out the fact that they don't play 40 minutes, yeah. um, flattens it out, is Crandall, Nelson. Well, it's uh, Walker first. Nelson Henry went past Crandall into second and Crandall third. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, you if, as a coach, you know, it's all right having a guy who's going to be able to drag it out for 40 minutes and give you everything. If you can get two guys to, to give you maximum efficiency, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, who can, and who are willing to accept that role, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and not playing for their own numbers and, you know, are comfortable yeah. with that role, then that's a long way to, to, to success, you know. 
a long way to success. Walker has the best win percentage of any player in the league as well this season. I think he's only lost, they've only lost three games while he's been playing. Um, so let's move to Sunday and we'll go to the WBBL trophy final first. But before we do that, we uh, need to reflect on the passing of Betty Cadona, just an absolute titan of uh, basketball uh, in this country, founded the Hatters uh, 60 years ago played in the first ever national cup championship which uh, was the was the big well the only real national tournament uh, at the time and it was it was later sort of broken up into cup and playoffs it was but it was sort of a combination of that 37 titles as a coach made sheffield the dominant force of women's basketball for for a couple of decades and i mean yeah. they, they they wouldn't exist without betty but also was a driving force behind the WBBL being set up, was very passionate about spreading the gospel of women's basketball. And I sort of think of all the women and girls that will have come through Sheffield, but also, as I said on commentary, about the people like Siobhan, who, prior, who would have been inspired to beat her. You know what yeah. I mean? That They saw that as the benchmark at the level that we wanted wanted to get to. And and just uh, just an incredible legacy for british basketball um that that betty leaves behind and, and not to mention you know generations of her own family yeah, still involved in George, the game yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. that's yeah. probably the greatest of all mm. um i think you've said most of it mm. um and i wouldn't want to to kind of douse your words because it was the first name i ever heard in in kind of linked to women's basketball um when, I, when you start reading the newspaper, the old newspapers that we used to have, and the, you know the BBL tip-offs and all of those things, um, this was a name. It was just a name that was utterly linked to women's basketball. And um, as you learned a bit more, and you understood kind of the drive and the administrative roles and and the the commitment to, to excellence, um, it just became more and more impressive. You know, and I don't know. I've, I've never met. I probably may have met her, but I've never spoken to her. Um, so I can only say this from afar, um, but um, the reality is what we have now is a, a, an obligation to take the women's game further mm. um, in her stead, mm. you know, to, to, to keep pushing it to, to the level that it needs to be on a, on a weekly basis, not just kind of a one-off basis. And um, yeah, it, it, there, there are people in the sport who generally the ones who don't want who don't seek attention, mm. who aren't about kind of waving and saying, well, look at me, I'm over here. There are those, those people that we don't necessarily appreciate as much, they just get on with being quietly excellent. Mm. And, and I think she's top of the category, mm. you know, or, or top of that category. You, you, know, you yeah. said, <laughs> when we were talking about uh, Vince a few months back, you said, uh, actually, the, the thing that has driven basketball in this country as individuals and the success yeah. the success and by success i would just mean still being around not necessarily yeah. winning trophies although sheffield did a lot of that is driven entirely by individuals and she was one such individual and i i did meet her a few times and she was she she always let you know what she thought she was very passionate forthright and and, and didn't hold anything back and if she thought things weren't done in a way that was right she would she would tell you about it but this as i say the fact that sheffield has existed for 60 years and the fact that they've been so uh so successful over those 60 years has, has been driven largely by her and it takes trailblazers doesn't it mm. the trailblazers come in different shapes or forms at different times different generations but each and everybody who's involved in the sport should be looking you know how can i improve things mm. how can i move things forward and you know, we've, it's not just been the last few years, there, there has been leaps and bounds in, in women's sport in this country. And um, basketball has to get get on with that. Mm. Um, but without the baseline of the trailblazers, the, you know, the ones who started it, the ones who've lived it, the ones who passionately um, argued for it and fought for it, um, particularly in women's sport and particularly in a, in, a, in a country which is netball dominated, you know, so you, you might just imagine the amount of 
walls and closed doors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she must have in the sixties, seventies, and eighties. Yeah, it must have gone yeah, up yeah. against you know yeah, trying yeah. to bring this American you know sport into the yeah. into the world of you know girls netball. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and to have the kind of the ingenuity and the drive to just continue to bang those walls down. It's kind of unfortunate. I know I know she won the sports personality, I think, mm. um, the unsung hero thing. Um, but it's kind of a little bit unfortunate that we, we don't get to kind of celebrate this until people have passed, mm. you know, the way as well as we could. You know, we, we really need to do a, a better job of, of kind of understanding as a sport what's going on, not just in our little area. But around the country, you know, and and and, and, and celebrating people who are um, sustaining it. Mm. Well, her name will live on on this trophy. So let's uh, let's get in uh, to the game. And and this was an intriguing game coming into it because obviously they're not played since forever. It was back in the beginning of the season, a five point game, but it wasn't quite the same lineups at that point. They're both fourteen and zero in the league and you think well are the suns the one team that might match up with them because nobody else has really laid a glove on on london save sheffield sheffield in one of the games got close to them when they weren't quite at full strength london um and i thought it was a bit of a nervy start it's a bit of a weird start london scored the first five points seven oaks the next eight points london the next 13 points winterburn was shooting the ball really well but nobody else was um, and and it was eighteen eight. And you you. It was at that point you started to think, are oh, Seven X going to have enough offense here? Yeah, it was London's defense, wasn't it? Well, a bit of both, really, because mm. um, you could see that. I mean, I mean, you're right about the teams. I mean, Seven Oaks are a, you know a historically good program. If you look at their numbers, yeah. you look at their results, you look at the the, the continuity of player. You look continuity of coach, they know each other backwards, um, they win and they win, you know, no matter who's on, on the court. They've got, you know, certainly, you know, Janice Monacana and um, I think Renee Bush coming off the bench. So mm. there's a little bit more depth there than in most WBBL teams in relation to kind of quality of starting players. So in theory, as you say, if you put, the, put all of that into a pot and kind of stir it and say the magic eight ball, which my daughter's just got, mm -hmm. um, you know, who's the most likely team to, to trouble London Lions? And, you know, it would probably come back um, seven oaks. Mm. Um, but they couldn't keep hold of the ball. And no. they didn't really have a, outside of cat car, they didn't have a secondary um, penetration threat, ball handling threat, and, and if you can't finish inside, which they struggled to do, or they couldn't even get yeah. the ball inside at times, yeah, yeah. then you need to have something on the pen, something from penetration. And um, as I say, apart from you know, cat car shooting, what were fairly contested, you know, eighteen foot jump shots, which is mm. capable of knocking down, um, they struggled to get anything. Yeah. Um, and as you say, London didn't shoot the ball great either, but London had the benefit of bringing. Two of their better offensive players, probably best offensive threats off the bench, mm. with them um, Beckford Norton and um, Breen. Breen, yeah. Breen and leads them in scoring coming off. Leads the bench. them in scoring doesn't come in until two minutes to go in yeah. the first quarter. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, you know, and, and that level of scoring depth and threat, as against the size and athleticism of their defense, which means that. You know what we ended up in was unfortunately a situation whereby, for all the togetherness, for all the camaraderie, for all the history of success, for all the, the fact that they are very well coached and, and competitive, they didn't have enough. And no. um, you know, and, and I'm not sure if that game was played another five times that London wouldn't win the same way for at those five times mm. because I think we just have to accept that um, London are a team which has an ex extravagant amount of talent mm. has the, it's a it's a it's not a phrase i like but it's basically hoovered up all the available british talent mm. um i said no so that's that's the wrong way of saying that that's not right because there's a lot more british talent outside of yeah, london yeah, 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 hoovered yeah. up the best available british yeah. talent you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. and saying you know and, and guys it players like you know um stewart and charles and uh, and Winterburn, obviously, Joe Leadham is just just an incredible player, an incredible you know, legend of, of, of British basketball, and, and that's without even going deeper into the bench. 
mm. you know, where they're still very talented. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and I think down the line, it's going to be an issue for the for the league as to how it handles it. Yeah, because, there, therein um, is the challenge. Um, so, so uh, nothing against London. They're, they're meant to do no, exactly no, no, what they, exactly, they exactly. did. It, you know, I've got yeah. no, not, not suggesting in any way that their their um, success is impacted by that. They 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 play, they are playing. They're really together for a group. Now, I think yeah. the togetherness comes from confidence. Confidence comes from playing. Playing comes from winning, and, and also being probably dealt with in in a slightly more professional situation than the, the vast majority of players in the league, just to yeah, the finance yeah, behind them. But even so, they still have to do what they have to do. Because the other thing is having, wrong. Having, the biggest, the having the biggest budget in the world doesn't, or in the league, sorry, doesn't mean that everything's going to work for you as we will get on to in the next game. Yeah, it doesn't. What I will say is, though, that, the, that this is where the league has to look at it because ultimately the, the, one of the reasons that the um, that the, the men's league is slightly different is because there's different import rules. Mm. You know, and it, you know every every BBL team can have four American players. Yeah. And if you're in a situation where um, one team is going to have the the six or seven best, or, six or six, arguably six or seven of the best British players, um, then the only and the other the other better British players are going to be split kind of across teams or abroad. Then or abroad then the only way that there is of kind of evening that up to a certain degree or improving the level yeah. is to allow for more import players. Yeah. And that's going back to the 1990, early 1990s. I was just thinking the same thing. It's 1996 all over again, isn't it? In that the yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm reacted thinking, yeah, to Bosman way ahead of everybody else. And, uh, but, and, and, but that it's was a Kingston they, situation. Yeah, you know, Kingston, exactly, Kingston yeah. won 11 or 12 and, you know, they yeah, had the yeah. best players. Yeah, they, had the yeah. best, you know, they were able to sign the best British players. And, and and um and there were scraps for everybody else basically yeah, yeah, yeah. and um that's you know that's more of a thing for the other clubs to get to the it level is, of yeah 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 to get to the level of london Let, let's but, get back to the game um sorry uh, yeah go on renee bush made a couple of couple of shots and with 240 to go in the in the first half it's 23 26 and they 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 were hanging on there and you just think oh can they get to half time we we said it on commentary can they get to half time down you know one shot or two shots and, and London scored the last seven points of the first half went into the locker rooms up 10 and then uh start of the second half they scored the first 12 points Joe Leader Warner just took over the game yeah. uh just incredible the defense was sensational from London just absolutely they they I mean they were struggling to they were struggling to get it's shots up them. never mind yeah. score yeah, they asphyxiated them, you know, basically. And that's where, as I say, that, you know, the extra, ultimately, it doesn't matter how, how, how much success you've had. If you can't get your shoulder past, mm. you can't get in the lane, you can't get to the rim, or you can't throw it into a big who can catch a ball and score from close in, um, then ultimately you're not going to stay in the game because they're a team which we've seen in the European games, London, um, who obviously very often started slowly, and in the European games it was often too much for them. Mm. You know, when they're on the road and they started slowly and they weren't able to come back because the, their offense wasn't there early. Um, but in the British game, they're going to have more opportunity to do that. You know, even yeah. even in the cup final, even in the cup final against Newcastle, you know, they didn't blow. They they, they slowly asphyxiated the game. They didn't yeah, blow yeah. anybody away. If you yeah, know what yeah. I mean. Um, and. It's it's kind of a wake up call for everybody else because everybody else has been tonked by Seven Hawks. Yeah, <laughs> you know Seven Hawks are indisputably the second best team in the league, mm. uh, and um, now everybody else has to figure out. Wow, okay, these guys are doing that to this team. Yeah, you know, and what uh, the play by we get to the play by Joe Leadham uh, on the floor where, where she's diving on the floor and throws the pass yeah. over ahead for 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 an assist. You've basically got your your most decorated player, most experienced player, who, who really, I mean, what, what happens in the WBBL will not impact on her legacy in any way, shape or form, other than to enhance it. Yeah. Making a play like that just shows mm -hmm. what that does for the rest of the team. You know, the it just fires the whole thing up. And that was the, I mean, that was the point at which it just, 
squeezed out, squeezed because again, it was a point off a turnover. She raced down court, sliding on the floor. It's Incredible right. play, and it just yeah. shows, just shows what they've got. Um, and yeah. and basically that that was the end of it. I mean, Seven Oaks didn't get to double figures in three of the four quarters. Neither of them. In the, it was just the second quarter. Yeah, um, and the thing is, they're good. Yeah, you know? they, they are <laughs> they're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. You know, this isn't. Yeah. yeah it's just, oh, oh excuse me. Era. So uh, Cat Carr uh, led the Suns with twelve points, six of twenty-one shooting. It was the tough, tough night to get shots up uh also had seven rebounds seven assists bush had uh eight points holly winterburn was the mvp four of six from three point line 16.6 rebounds five assists a close second in the mvp race uh joe leader morner with 14 six and six six and six and shanice beckford norton had 11 yeah, it's always good to get your points in the first half for the MVP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Always yeah, good yeah, to get, yeah. Uh, you know, get yourself firmly in the conversation. But, you know, she made shots early. Um, so, yeah, fully deserved. So let's go to the men's final. And this one finished London line 68, Cheshire Phoenix 82. And obviously the discussion points in the week was who was going to play. Uh, name on right uh, was back. Dickerson was back back Lockhart the only returner for London although he didn't play in the game um so so obviously there they it's funny you talk about all the depth at the beginning of the season you, then you looked at the lineup and you go they basically got two kids coming off the bench yeah um uh, and Chris Tarwia but he's coming off behind one of the one of the kids so uh, early stages um London in a bit of zone defense Ocherobia with some some effort plays not a ton of scoring but the Knicks just got in front, eleven to seven. I was really surprised, near shocked that they started off in the zone. Um, not because zones can't work, not because it's not necessarily a good tactic. I mean, they've got three pretty good shooters out there in Okrafor, Wright, and Bradley. So it's you know it's maybe a way to keep Larry Austin from the from the rim. Um, but the fact that you just got beat by thirty eight. You know, and, and you want to be sending a message to your players that this isn't that they have to take personal responsibility and that they're going to have to be better. And um, by going into a zone, you kind of go away from that. You know, um, you, you 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 don't focus on this is your man. I need you to be better than your man. There's no reason why they couldn't have matched up with them uh, in so far. You know, Justin and Teddy and and, and Dirk and Austin and those guys. Um, they've got the, the best shot blocker in the league who, waiting in the lane that they can that they can send their way. Um, and I just thought they didn't need tactics. I thought they needed a shot, a shot of, you know, a shot of kind of look into your eyes and, you know, this is a big game. It's live on TV, big crowd here. You know, you're going to have to go and guard your guys. I didn't think they needed to do that. I thought I'd sent a, sent a pretty dubious message. Um, so they, they kind of toggled in and out of that throughout. And it did throw Cheshire off a little bit. Um, but at some point you're gonna to have to guard these guys, and you may as well get into them early, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, then, um, it, yeah, it went kind of back and forwards early. But London, as you say, London's bench was, you know, there's basically Jordan Williams, an unhealthy Jordan Williams, who again yeah. get the ball in the block against Kyle Carey, and he's throwing the ball out or whoever he was who was guarding him. And throwing the ball out to Ryan Martin at the three-point line, and you think, well, Jordan Williams isn't, is, you know, is not in any shape to be. That's not Jordan Williams, you know. Um, then you've got young Caboza who's coming on and playing with a ton of energy, but he's being asked to be something, you know, he's not. He's been there for three or four days. He's playing some minutes at the point, some minutes at the two. Um, you know, it's not a kind of a a makeup which is going to lead you to think, well, actually, this is the way they, this is the way you're going to plot out a victory in this game. Um, Martin struggled again, you know, as, as he has, you know, as his numbers are, you know, his numbers are really, you know, he hasn't played for three years. He's a good player, yeah, but he yeah. hasn't played for three years. Yeah. You know, what are you going to get from in a, you know, in that? And then you had the whole Kelly thing. And as I say, Washburn's not there. Reese is on the bench. Kelly, um, I wouldn't say he, I think, I think Kelly tries. I think Kelly does. I don't think he's ever, 
a guy who doesn't show up and, and try and do, but I think he's a guy who needs to be in a good ecosystem around him. Mm. He needs to know what his roles and responsibilities are. He needs to know when he's being expected, where, where the, the offense is coming from. They're coming into him where he's expected to be so he can leverage his wingspan. And um, offensively, he needs to know who's going to be, are they going to be throwing him lobs, they're going to be posting him up or whatever. And I think the uncertainty of the group really impacts him. So he picked up a couple of fouls. Um, he then didn't come back in for the whole first half, yeah. which I think at, at that point, I think you've lost him. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and instead you're running with... the same thing, because at one point they had three guys on two, and I forget who the other two were now, um, and they sat them all down. I was just thinking, you've got to bring Kelly back in, because by the time he comes, because I think he went off at the eight minute mark. So if yeah. you go in real time from eight minutes to the start of the third quarter, an hour. Yeah. it's half an hour at least. And you just think, how are you, how is he supposed to just, even if it was two minutes at the end of the first, uh, end of the well, second quarter. Uh, well, well, you think, well, the thing is, once you've saved him for that long, you don't want to put him back in. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? True. And this is what I thought Cheshire got it right because Cheshire, Cheshire did win in foul trouble, but Bradley got two. Yeah. And then they brought him back in at the seven minutes mark. And he picked up his third. Yeah. But, so what? You know, he yeah, yeah, knows, yeah. That, you know, to be honest, yeah. He's up with three, I think. Commentary, you know, you don't want to leave all your bullets in the holster or, or whatever, or in the chamber or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the final, you want to get them playing. So they're not deep. They've got Jordan Williams, who is just not being, who is not Jordan Williams. You've got Ryan Martin, who is not the Ryan Martin, you know, who played around Europe and has been successful. Yeah. Right? Um, you got everything on Dirk Williams and Cheshire didn't do a great job of guarding him to be fair in the first half given everything that was going on they did an excellent job on Kajini mm. you know they were really locked into him and, and he struggled a little bit because it was their shot creation because of Reese not being there but they let Dirk get away and they made some mental mistakes in relation to that and that actually kept London quite close and that yeah. might be the reason why also why Kelly didn't come back in yeah, because yeah. you know London were really in the got game away. Yeah, I hadn't got the win, so, got the five points. But I so still don't like it. I still think you no. know, got the I'm the same. It, it, particularly in a final, it yeah. would be my take. So there was an 11 2 run around the first break. Uh, Larry Austin being Larry Austin, basically attacking. Um, got out to a 10 point lead. It looked like they might got to get away, but as you say, you know, then Dirk and Justin made a couple of shots. It's back down. To, to three. It was five point game at halftime, 35 40. And we were sat there going, Cheshire ought to have a bigger lead than this. They ought to, they, in some ways, it was like the, the thing that Leicester did in the cup final to Manchester. They had them and they knocked them out basically yeah, before yeah. halftime. Cheshire weren't able to do that. And it was that thing of, Oh gosh, I wonder if they might regret that. You know what I mean? Because well, however London yeah. had played on Thursday and however they were playing in that game, you wouldn't want to get to the last two minutes of the game with Kajini, I mean, Dirk, and Justin on the court and, and it'd be a two-point game. Yeah, oh absolutely. Mm. Um I did, I thought um Cheshire obviously had their own foul trouble losing Bradley. Mm. You know, that's a big loss for them. They've obviously lost Mockford already. So they're a little bit down as well. So they're not able to kind of throw the amount of bodies that, for instance, Leicester were at Manchester. You know, they yeah, don't true. have a Connor Washington yeah, yeah. come off yeah, the bench yeah. and shut yeah, people yeah. down, you know? So to a certain degree, they have to play as a, as a 40 minute game. And what they have is young, is young Austin, <laughs> um, who is um, relentless. Mm. You know, Rob, Rob actually nailed it when he said, you know, he's a guy who makes layups. And that's mm. what we've been saying, I think, on here for a while. He doesn't miss at the rim. And more importantly than that, Gets offensive rebounds mm. and makes play. Lots of guys. There's lots of guys I've, I had in the Eagles and coaches who get fan, make fantastic plays, get fantastic offensive rebounds. You can't finish, or you throw, mm. or you throw it into the crowd. It's a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's you get frustrated. Oh, what a play! Oh, you know, no points. Um, Austin finishes every single time. And the thing with Austin, he was, he was the MVP. We we'll talk about him for a little bit. Um. He was in the papers about six weeks ago saying we can win the trophy. Mm. Right? Um, and that or it might be the papers, it might be on the BBL website. And that's a big thing for an American, first year American, because that means he's got a target in his mind. That means he's looked ahead and he's thought, hang on, these these games this are happening. Is thing, this is yeah. this is our opportunity. Now, it doesn't, yeah. now a lot of a lot of 
first time Americans in this league. We'll just walk through it and, you know, where are we playing on Sunday? Coach, we're playing here. Where are we playing? Oh, well, this is a trophy. Oh, what's that mean? You know, they don't know what yeah, a trophy yeah. is. They've yeah, always yeah. been in the finals yeah. at the end of the season. You know, it's just like another competition. So what? He was taught, he was targeting it. And that was really, and then you have to, then you have to think, well, actually, when did they, you know, win the semi final? They won the semi final in, in, in the fourth quarter in Glasgow. Yeah. Because when of he, him. Because of him. Because yeah. of his mentality and his willpower. And, um, his ability to, to you know to, to score at the rim and just to, to drag a team back with force of will, and he again did that. And the type that you know, I think Cheshire again was smart. Okrafor played basically the whole game. He came out for a minute and ten seconds in the big middle of the second quarter, and I think that was probably ten seconds too long. Um, but they got him back in straight away because Austin's a different player when Okrafor's on the court. You know, there's a, there's a the different speed and, and Okrafor benefits from that kind of relentlessness from Austin and Austin benefits from Okrafor's ability to control the tempo and just to make everything, to calm everything down. So I thought they then, they played, because they got Bradley and foul trouble, they played a bit of Dickerson and um, Ocherubia together in the first half, which kind of worked, kind of didn't. You know, they, they make, they're they making plays, but it's, it's, not, it's not smooth. You know, and I think that helped also London kind of keeping things a little bit closer. And in the second half, I thought Cheshire made all the right adjustments. I don't think London really had any adjustments to make. Mm. Um, so there we go. I, um, I thought it was a bit more of the same in that early in the early in the third quarter, you got Teddy hitting a three, and Am one from Austin. They're out to twelve, and I'm thinking, here it is. Here's your knockout blow. This is it. Go win it now. And they, and they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't land that knock knockout blow, and well, they and, kept missing foul shots as well. Yeah, man. yeah, foul shots. You know, I mean, he missed foul man. shots. That's a big thing, and that gym is tough because we played the first ever game in that gym yeah. in the big arena there, and you know I had a couple of really good shooters on our team that year, and I think Huffman was like oh seven after about yeah. twelve minutes because yeah. you just couldn't get the depth perception. Because you know, that was so the big. other interesting thing is London didn't even come out really at halftime. They might have had one shot each or two shots each. They were in the locker room for so long. The locker rooms are a it's bit just far away. Experience of finals, I'm afraid that you yeah. know, also knowing where you're going and you know, it is a walk because the sight lines are different going either way. And they yeah. had got seats behind the basket, which they don't normally have there, yeah, which gives you a little bit. But you've got those, you've got those massive windows with the thing at the at the other end. And yeah. anyway. That just no, but it's, no, no. I think I think that was a miscalculation. You know, we always, you know, it is a it's a, it's a minute and a half, two minute walk back to the locker room. Yeah, yeah. You know, at the Emirates, and um, not quite so far from the big halls, it's from the small hall, but even so, um, and and by the time you've talked about everything and got into them, you know, you, again, you know, it's, it's 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 one of those things you learn only through painful experience. Yeah. Um, that you want to be out there a bit quicker. Um. The beginning of the third quarter, I was surprised Justin wanted to break after three minutes. Yeah. He called, called you know, called for a sub after three minutes. I'm thinking, is he healthy or what? Because this is a final, you mm. know. You know, and I mean, I understand that he played a few minutes in the first half, but you can't be winded after three minutes of the third quarter when you're down by six. You know, you've got to be at that point, and that's when you've got to break through it. Particularly when you look at the lack of depth they had in that spot. Yeah. You know? Um well, they, and, and Lockhart was there. They just didn't put him on. They play him, um, you know. So that's uh, yeah, I'm not. Well, he's I don't know. He hasn't played. He hasn't played much. You no, know, he's he obviously been. No. And this is why I'm wondering who's making the decisions as to who plays and who doesn't. Mm. Um, which you mentioned in the previous game. Um, I have no problem with him playing the young lad. We're playing Caboza, um because over the past few games, you know, he's played well enough to earn minutes. But he needs to be played in very specific circumstances with a very specific group around him with a very specific role. And because you don't get consolation prizes for playing young players in finals, you yeah, know, it's yeah, about winning or losing. Yeah. And therefore you need to give him the chance to be um to be the most impactful that he can be and take the least away weight. And I thought he was very good at times, but I thought his strengths showed up and I thought his weaknesses showed up. You know, his shooting was his shooting was a struggle a couple of times. Um, over penetrated, turn the ball over a couple of other times. He made he gave them an injection of enthusiasm, both defensively and offensively, that they desperately needed. Yeah, but you can't be hanging on a 20 year old who's played four games, yeah, to yeah. win a final. You know, you, you just can't be ex expecting that of him. Um, and that's what it comes down to winning and winning and losing ultimately. That's what goes in the book. That no one remembers who plays or not. No. Um, and so, yeah, and so I thought what happened. Find you, and you're going to get to it towards the end of the yeah. third quarter. Yeah. I thought the biggest thing in this, the biggest 
momentum changer in this game um, was Kyle Carey knocking down two threes. Yeah. Um, and Kyle Carey can shoot. I'm not saying he can't shoot. It's not saying that's unexpected. Yeah. Um, but Ben Thomas had to make a decision in the second half as to what lineup he went with. And um, when Bradley came out, he went with Carey and he basically had Carey playing the four. And he didn't bring Dickerson in the whole second half. Mm. You know, and he played with the four small. And that works with if Carey is playing well. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm always a, fan, I'm a big fan of being small as opposed to big. And that was the ultimate of it. You know, Carey, he carries long enough. He's athletic enough. He's not really strong enough to play the four. You think about it. You, know, you think if Jordan Williams is on him, you think that a healthy Jordan Williams, he's going to score on him basically every time down. But by Carey, Carey knocking down those shots, by, by challenging jump shots, challenge, you know, playing defense the way he was, by being able to, by, allowing the coach to keep him on the court and not have that thought in his head, should I play my American Pac-12 superstar from Washington? Yeah, or should, yeah, I, play, yeah. or should yeah, I play? Yeah, or should yeah. I be playing Kyle, who's, you know, the young lad who, I say young lad, he's, he's played a bit now. He's, he's more than a young player. But at the beginning of the season, there was times where he hardly got off the bench for this team. Yeah, yeah. You know, they yeah. had McSwig and they had Mockford. He was the one who was lost. Instead, he basically plays a pivotal role in, in the third and the fourth quarter. Primarily because he knocks down some tough shots, and then particularly the one in the, I think it was the second half, where it, no, the first half against the zone at the top of the key, not one down against the zone, which was critical to them. Um, so that meant that Cheshire could play a fast that released Wright, who had an advantage against Kajini and Kajini, and, and he was able to score. And then you've got Wright and Austin attacking the rim, and you've got London, who are leaderless. Yeah, and that 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 was the the decisive bit in the game. So with eleven minutes to go, it's a four point game, fifty five fifty nine. Nick scored the next fifteen points, all Austin and Wright, all driving to the basket or free throws, and they are fifty five uh, seventy four ahead. And they finally had that lead that I was saying this is this is the point. This that was the knockout blow that they finally managed to land at the start um, end of the third know, start of the fourth. You know, and, and with a Kelly, and, and and to a certain degree, with a Tawaya, because Tawaya played um, 30 minutes, I think it was plus 10 or plus 10, 14. Yeah, something. plus 10, I think he was. Plus right. 10, and, and he is a guy who's been buried, again, I'm not sure whether it's by the coach or by the GM, but he's been buried behind Ryan Martin, mm. Kyla Kelly, um, subsequently Jordan Williams coming back. Mm. he's been almost been an afterthought in relation to, you know, oh, well, nothing else is working. We'll put him in the game. Well, in the Manchester sure. game, he only played about two minutes. And I, I'd assumed, because he'd sat for so long, I'd assumed he was injured because he was on the bench, but he, just, he never came on. And it's just weird, you know, because eventually you get judged on productivity on the court, you know, and, and there's now, you know, and, you know, I've, you know, I've watched Ryan Martin and, 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 and I've watched Jordan Williams and the productivity, certainly for Williams over last week, it hasn't been there. And, and for both of them, that neither of them have any lift. You know, they're both getting back into shape. They're both not not the players um, that they were. And they, they can't be expected to be the players that they were because, they, you know, they haven't played. And yet you've got this guy, Tawia, who is a, has been there all season. Um who is a role player, I think you would say, mm. but can be impactful and has at least has the ability to jump above the rim. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, um, and impact the game in that way. And in fact, you know, if you were picking a guy, a player in this league to, you know, to, to match him up against, and Ocherubia would be pretty near the top of the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's another big body, and basically, Mike Ocherubia gets to the front of the rim and bullies people and looks and hooks to, to hook over his You need this, someone with the strength to stop him getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you didn't see it. So that in itself was also bizarre. I thought Justin coming out sent me a signal. You know, the beginning of the third quarter was like, well, who, who's leading this team? Because, you know, I just don't see him doing that if, if everything was right in the camp. Um, we've seen him play in finals before where he's literally been led from the front. He's not wanted to blow after three and a half minutes. Um, Dirk can't carry them everywhere. You would never have let me win a bet which said that, um, that Kyle Carey was going to make more threes than Lorenzo Cagini, but he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and Larry Austin and Damon Wright just took the game away from them, but they did that because they were able to play small because Kyle Carey was able to space the floor 
because if Dickerson had been in the game with Ocherobia, there wouldn't have been the space for them to attack in the way that they did. Mm. Um, London also kind of fiddled around with the zone a little bit, but it never really seemed to me that it was in any way changing the game or impactful. You know, Teddy was able to get some threes off the corner. They were able to match up with Kelly when he was on the wing. Um, and, you know, I just thought that all the decisions in relation to the combination, I think Cheshire probably had more talent than London in this game, more healthy talent, um, despite what we know about London's budget, etc. At the end of the day, they've, you know, they've, they're missing recent, they're missing Washburn. Mm. And when they were missing those two guys against Surrey, they lost. And Surrey hadn't won another game all season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I think Cheshire did have the benefit of talent, but I also think they, they managed that talent better. Yeah. Um, and that they were definitely more together and, and, and more um, focused on it all. Um, and London just a mess. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it, it's not even a question of kind of pointing fingers now. It's like, you know, they, they lost four games before. They were coming off a 20-point win in the first round of the trophy at London, at Newcastle, sorry. They lost two cup semi-finals to Leicester by three points. They lost to Newcastle on Sky and they lost a game at Surrey where they only had six players on New Year's Day. Mm. They get that back, they win by 20 at Newcastle after they're up by like 25 after the first quarter. And then they change the coach. Mm. You know, and, and and there's never that I've seen been an explanation for, for why they changed the coach. Um, obviously, the coach was not picked by the GM. So the GM um, has involved himself to change the coach, but then that means everything that happens afterwards it isn't on the new coach, it's on the GM. Mm. You know, and so he's the one who needs to be speaking to the fans to be saying what's going on with Julian Washburn. He's the one, you know, there's been some mention on Twitter from a couple of ex-London players about this as well. And I don't know the truth of it, so it is speculation to a certain degree. Um, but he's the one who needs to be justifying what's going on, because what, what's going on doesn't make any sense to um, those looking on the outside. And if it doesn't make any sense to those looking on the outside, then there's nothing more um, internal in its thinking than the, than a basketball team. So what are the people on the inside yeah, making? Yeah, yeah, Most yeah, importantly, yeah. what are the players making of it? And we've got an idea of what Julian Washburn's making of it because he's what. Mm. And until well, we don't even know that, to be honest with you. Well, that. until until they tell us otherwise, unless, he's yeah, because that's the only news that's out there. Well, so, unless they got rid of him, it would be the. Well, if they got rid of him, we they, know they, he's, they he, what, he wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, we know he's left. Yeah, and um, we know it's been announced by someone close to him, not someone close to the club. Yeah, so true. until they put out an alternative message, that's the that's the um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, what it looks like. With. But yeah, we don't yeah. know. The reality we don't know. is, we don't but, know. They are they are currently on the canvas looking for their gum shield. I think the question is whether they can get back up. Um, let's but need Reese. Well, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but they need Reese to be to be locked into it, you know. And 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 where's where's his head going to be now that if, now his mate's gone? Mm. Um, where's you know? I mean, you saw. I don't know if you saw the the shots of Kelly on the bench after the game, but he just looked like he was in a daze. Mm. You know, and, and I've been quite you know. And playing in the BBL and traveling around Europe at seven foot one, and, and, and you know, it's not easy. And I've been impressed with him this year and the way that he's carried himself, and you know, he's and the way that he's he's he's, show, he's played and the effort he's shown. And you haven't see, ever seen any kind of you haven't seen him dogging it, you know. Yeah. Um, but he just looked like wow. He didn't even know he had five fouls at the end. Yeah. Look at the camera. It's like five. Wow. Mm. You know. So that, you want a definition of locked in? You know, that's <laughs> yeah. not it. Um, you want a definition of bought in? That's not it. So they're not no. bought in. So are they just basically riding time out to the end of the year? Mm. Um, and the, if that is the case, then, then the fans deserve better and deserve a little bit of an explanation. Mm. So, and of course, all of this is, you know, and all of this is kind of heightened by the fact that A, it was a final. B, they lost by 20. And C, they've come in with, you know, aspirations to, to dominate Europe. Mm. And they're getting beat by 55 combined in three in two games, you know. So if it was any other club, you know, and I include yeah, Newcastle in that because Newcastle have expectations to be much higher than eight and ten, where they are as well. Yeah. But even any other club, they'd be getting you know some stick about it. 
But with London, everything, as soon as you put yourself out there, everything becomes magnified three times over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If I were talking about them like this. So let's move on from that and let's talk about those who, who were who, who were celebrating at the end. Delighted for um, for Ben Thomas. He's a really, uh, really nice bloke. I really enjoyed watching him celebrate and Danny Byrne as well. Um, but the fans, yeah. the fans were, I've got to, I've got to say, the fans were amazing. They were right behind us, uh, oh, whoops, behind us, hundreds of them, really loud, all piled up the M6. It's a fair old schlep, even from, uh, even from Cheshire. They came in their buses. When we left at the end, by the way, they were all outside uh, cheering the players as they, as they, as they came out. I'm sure they had a great bus ride uh, back. They, they fully, uh, fully deserved that. And please, pleased for the whole club it was a really really good day for them and 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 a really good win and and they really enjoyed it and uh, to be honest with you they created the bulk of the of the atmosphere in the building so i was, I was really pleased for them yeah absolutely you know and it's you know and obviously they, they have a long history of winning stuff you know going back 20 years and particularly the trophy um but this is one of the benefits that you know when we talk about bbl structures and dropping competitions and all this type of thing and um, that people forget mm. you know it's about days out you know the, mm. it, look the last game i was ever on the eagles bench was in was in glasgow mm. for a trophy final you know and so I, I still have that memory of you know all those fans and getty standing up on the yeah yeah, yeah, on, yeah, on, the, on, yeah. on the chairs and all of yeah. that stuff you know, and and the fans who travelled up a day before a pandemic, whereby they were going to lock locked in their rooms for three months, having a fantastic time. And Cheshire is the same. You go to Cheshire, it's the same people you see. Cheshire is a yeah, yeah. historic club. Insofar as when we talked before about individuals being the reason for that that basketball, you know, it, it progresses. Um, you know, you know, Ben Thomas, James Bryce, they've came up through Cheshire. Yeah, yeah. You know, through obviously they've got. Burton telling them not to play too many players, you know, <laughs> that type of thing as well. And, 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 you know, and because of that, there is a, there is a fan base there and they haven't had that much success. They haven't got to many finals, you know, they got the final 2018 in Birmingham and obviously yeah. um, they, they won that, but ultimately, you know, the, the, the makeup of the competition, the makeup of the competitions that we have does allow teams to have a day in the sun. And if you get a team which is rolling at the right time of the season, whose players get kind of locked into that, that final mentality. And then the fans realise, well, actually, hang on, there's a chance we, you know, we can get something out of this. Um, then you can have a great day. And that's, that's what this that's is what about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's about, that's what it you know, and it's like, you know, I know you've, you, you're, you're there when you've got, you've got Alaska and you've got Pat and Ostro who like got X thousand trophies between them. But they will, they will both tell you, you know, it's still special. Some players don't win. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no yeah. guarantee that you'll ever get to a final again. Mm. It is still, spe every single final is special. You know, the ones you win, even the ones you lose, um, they're special. And you know, that, you know, and that's why I was so impressed with what Austin said a few weeks ago, you know, we, we win this trophy. You know, it was, he had his eyes on the prize. That means a lot. And um, yeah, and the fans, yeah, you can see them on the telly. They, they, they are great. Every club, look, it, it is a pet hate of mine. The, the, one of the ultimate pet hates of mine is every new American player turns up in this league and after six weeks says, we've got the best fans in the league. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I just hate it because everybody's got good fans. All the fans turn out and, you know, and, uh, and judging between one set and another set based on what they want to hear has just never fit my kind of legal sensibility, you know? Prove it was my comment, you know, prove it. <laughs> but, you know, it's a very friendly place, tells me at Port. Mm. Until you start playing, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, and that's yeah, not that's yeah, not yeah, bad, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, there, you know, there's never, um, it's and, it's, and even Northgate was friendly, albeit it was hot, <laughs> um, it, it was despicable, but it was friendly, you know, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, you, know, the yeah. you know, Cal, you you'd go there and then you know you beat your brains out on a hard floor and. Calvin Davis to dunk on you. Yeah. Um, and they did wave you off by by they beat you by 20, and everybody's really nice. But um, you know, people sustain our sport. Yeah. And people need to, and there's no reason why people who earn success shouldn't get success. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's no reason why we just need to have a, a regular season of like 55 league games and then some playoffs at the end. Yeah. And make it monotonous. Why? Let's yeah. let's have I don't have a problem with having these competitions. Yeah, me. Um, because it gives it gives um the league um, a showpiece and it gives um 
it, it gives us an opportunity to market stuff and it gives people the chance of tan, well, tangible well, rewards. Yeah, memories. Memory, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. guys have got a bond now. That team has got a bond. Exactly. Yeah, those guys can come yeah, back yeah. in twenty years' time, and there'll be people there going, oh, "I was there in Glasgow when we won that trophy." Absolutely, and that's you know that, that's great. And so yeah, um, uh, you would. It's hard, right? Because London's owners have put a lot of money and a lot of faith into into the sport. Mm. You know, we've heard about the seven the seven million pound investment injection coming in, um, which you know we can only kind of applaud for the the, the league and, and how the, how it moves things forward. You know, so how can you be critical of anybody? You know, the money they put into the women's team this year, mm. you know, without any real reward, financial reward. Mm. You know, how can you possibly be critical of that? Of all all those good things, and, and I listened to the um the the, the hoops fix um podcast that Sam yeah, did yeah, with yeah. with um yeah. the gentleman from um seven seven seven, and and I thought it was exceptional. Yeah, you know, yeah. I thought what he was saying was exceptional. He was asked the right questions, and you know, I really thought, hang on, this this guy kind of gets it, but they need to sort their club out. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, if, if you're looking at this on the on the you know, on an absolute kind of sporting perspective the last week for them has been a catastrophe mm. and you would say the better organ the better organization won that final mm. more fans more fan engagement more togetherness with the group more links with the players um more local support i think that might be a little bit harsh the london fans would probably come back at me in relation to that because they all they need is something to support in london mm. um against you know, for all the fantastic things that, that they're attempting to do with the league, they haven't sorted their club out the, right, the way they need to. And at the moment, you know, and you know, all, you know, I think um, Jerry Reinsdorf, the ex-Chicago Bulls um, yeah. owner, got absolutely yeah. castigated for saying players don't win championships, organizations do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but <laughs> I understand. The sentiment, I don't necessarily yeah, agree yeah. with that. I think no, players win them. Uh, you know, I think, you know, you know, Charles Smith wins championships, Drew Sullivan wins championships, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, Doesn't matter, yeah. you, know, you know, but there comes a time where there is a dichotomy between what is going on within the organisations, mm. which does make a palpable and tangible difference on the court. Yeah. I think you can legitimately say that that kind of happened yesterday. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot more to winning in this league than simply putting a bunch of G League players together mm. who are very talented. You know, you have to manage injuries, you have to manage personalities, you have to understand where they're all at, keep them all happy, you have to play the right guys at the right time and make sure they're all pointing in the right direction. Mm. Um, and Cheshire did a better job of that than London did. They did. Over the past six weeks. They did. And uh, congratulations uh, to them. As you said, it's their first trophy since 2018 when they won the Cup, a second for Ben Thomas, their fifth trophy. So they're now in outright second in that uh, competition. They were level with Thames Valley Tigers on four wins. They've now got five. Eagles, as you all well know, have seven and are the most successful team. Uh, Dirk Williams led the Lions with 24 points, four of seven three-point shooting. Justin Robinson, 12 points, one of six, three-point shooting. Kajini, 12 points, 0 of five. If you take Dirk out of it, the rest of the Lions were two for 17 from behind the arc. They shot 42 I they no, but I also thought they got no internal scoring, no interior mm. scoring outside of layups. You know, yeah. occasionally Kajini on a curl or, or Robinson, but they got nothing from their bigs scoring inside. I don't think, well, how many field goals did Martin and Williams make between them? Maybe one or two. Mm. Um, Kelly the same Kelly you know Kelly Martin and Williams probably had two or three field goals between them and I don't see how they they can't win that way uh, Austin uh, Larry Austin Jr. was the MVP 23 points 10 rebounds 5 offensive 5 defensive um, not not far behind him in the MVP rating or was uh, name on right 5 of 7 shooting for 18 points um, Michael Chirobi had 12 and 8 Teddy Okirafo 12 six and five they had 44 points in the paint they had 17 second chance points they were 23 of 34 from the free throw line so they could have won by even more well austin um, i mean austin had to be the mvp yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But he led yeah, the way yeah, yeah, you know, yeah he, he, yeah, he led yeah. the way and right kind of was he was your closer he finished yeah, them off yeah, yeah. um 
but um, you know, Austin, Austin just I just I just see gores in Austin. I'm, I know mm. that's yeah, a bit yeah. niche, niche reference to to um, the Newcastle fans from ten years ago. For no, Rose. no, yeah, I see it too. It's it's yeah. just the directness and the speed. The direct, he's actually a little bit. He's a little bit yeah. less north south. He's a little yeah. bit. He's slightly more skilled north um, yeah. side to side. A bit bigger as bit, well. A bit bigger, but it's just his imp- his ability to impact the game. He's not quite as temperamental, I don't think. Um, <laughs> But his ability to impact the game, you know, we had those two years, we won the league both years because he gives you that change. Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a vital thing to have if you if you utilize it properly. And I, you know, I'm just I'm just incredibly, you know, they couldn't keep him from the rim, they couldn't keep him off the offensive glass. So he had 25 points. Did he, he didn't make a three, I don't think. He might have made one. Oh, um, I haven't noted it down. I don't think you know because he, he doesn't score that way, and that's so vital. The guy who makes layups, Rob said it in the commentary, those guys are hard to get. Yeah, yeah, and they're, yeah. they're worth their weight, you know. Yeah. So yeah, credit to him in particular, but credit to the yeah, to, to, to Ben and, and to the to the Cheshire guys. Not playing Dickerson in the fourth in the whole second half is a big call. Mm. You know, you know, you, you know, if you compare it to you know to the Manchester final we talked about when Manchester had all the guys in and they were all trying to get into a rhythm, you know, and it didn't work. Um, you know, he just played the guy. He, he got a team that was ready to play in a final, and he, he went with the guys who were there Very and ready, and he didn't it, yeah. worry about having to, to pick up the bits afterwards. Yeah, yeah, and Dickerson yeah. seemed quite happy with it, winning the trophy and all that. <laughs> he seemed because to really you, enjoy it at the end. Because yeah. what you find is, yeah, these yeah. American guys, because of the systems that they play in, because generally they'll have come from mid-major colleges, yeah. or, or, you know, or, or, or if they're, if they're a, played in a, a big-time school, they're playing in a kind of a big-time conference, but with a lesser school, mm. You know, like he's went to, to Washington. They Washington. probably they, these guys they won't have won stuff before. Mm. Winning, you know, it's it's it, it, when um I think Rod Glasgow said when we won that trophy final, it was the first try, the first final he'd ever won. Yeah. Because they play their regular seasons and then they have their conference tournaments at the end yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, but they, and even in you go to Slovakia where Rod was, they play a, pre- a regular season of forty eight games with the playoffs at the end, then maybe a cup competition halfway through, which is kind of half arsed you know yeah yeah um and so so for these guys winning finals yeah, you know, yeah. it's a good thing winning it's, it's a, a good thing. thing nothing will it's nothing will thing, convince yeah. me otherwise it's a great you you i spoke to some cheshire fans at the end and yeah. nothing will take that moment away that that moment of enjoyment that 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 bus ride home that that the memories and the photos and all of the videos and that and ben's fiance singing uh singing on the bus on the way home fantastic well, you know, um, that was the time that he must have proposed already then she's a fiance yeah, but i mean yeah, that yeah. would have been the time wouldn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that will do us for this uh, Monday night. Congratulations to Cheshire. I hope you're still uh, celebrating and parting away and enjoying it. But Dave and I will go back to the more mundane tasks of the rest of our, <laughs> the rest of our week. Uh, and we will be back. Oh, possibly not next Sunday. Programming note, I believe we might be retrying to get to Edinburgh again next Sunday. <laughs> See if we really? can get are, are, you, are you fighting for a playoff place? Are you? Or what? I don't think the game actually matters, but oh, well, uh, but, is a, is a but, but the pride outbreak. of taking them all the way rather than forty miles. I think there's a cool without break on the way. Of the <laughs> so so possibly it might be another Monday night breakdown next week. But I need to get confirmation on that. So uh, look out! I'm sure I'll, you'll find it anyway. Uh, so have a great week, and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.